Hello everyone, Dr. Mandel here with you. I want to say welcome to everyone out there. Hello. This is something that we got to do together. And it's about correcting pinched nerves. Millions of people out there worldwide. And we are streaming live right now. And we're going to have probably a whole lot of people in our chat room because this is something that's a major epidemic. And what do we do about this crazy thing? Well, I'm going to teach you some great remedies right now. I think you'll enjoy this, and I will try to move as quick as I can. If you look here right here, this is what we're talking about, the old pinch nerve. These nerves commonly occur in the spine, in the neck, in the back, in the mid-back, in the lower back, but nerves can pinch in many places. But it could be the elbow, it could be the uh, wrist, it could be the shoulder, more commonly in the neck, back, mid-back area more kindly neck and lower back, but let's go right to it. Let's move quick because I have a lot to share with you and I want to keep this interesting. Right here is the biggest problem, poor posture, internal rotation. Guys, we know, and young ladies, we know that the internal rotation, the pronation of the shoulders, the rounded shoulders because of tight pecs, those tight, tight pecs keep pulling us forward. And we're trying to work our posture, trying to get our head back and trying to get our shoulders back, but we need to stretch these chest muscles. You must do those door stretches, get inside the doorway like this and really open it up and stretch those pecs because those pecs is gonna, are gonna bring you forward. You can look here, shorten hamstrings, make sure the terminal is uh, at eye level or one third, uh, uh, below give or take but this hip flexors these hip flexors are killing people that ugh, just squeezing on those hip flexors sitting down all day you're doing a, a bad job you're really weakening the glutes uh, you're just contracting the iliopsoas muscles so uh, here it just basically shows you the correct ways to sit i'm not going to go in through everything but uh, just good ergonomics you can look at feet flat on the floor flat on the floor uh, make sure that you have, you know, good level, that you're not flexing like, with, like this with the head uh, and try to get up more often. Make sure you have a good support like I'm using right here. I can't show you because it's in my chair right now, but good lumbar support keeps me up. Very important uh, that you're doing that. Okay, let's move up here. We look at the old sciatica, the old pain down the leg, tingling, burning, cramping, coming from five lumbar nerve roots. I'm sorry, three, uh, the L4, L5, and the S1, S2, S3, two lumbar nerve roots, and the First three sacral nerve roots form that big fat nerve, fattest, longest nerve of the body, comes out of the buttocks, goes down the back of the buttocks, into the leg, burning, tingling, numbness, cramping, aching. People know what sciatica is. Uh, here, people actually know what an irritated nerve root, a radiculopathy, pain in the neck, making its way into the shoulder, into the arm, into the shoulder blades. Uh, that can affect behind the skull. It affects our eyes. It's a whole horrible thing and i can tell you those nerves can play a lot of funny games a lot of neurologicals tinnitus vertigo visual problems uh giddiness that's one that i get when i get affected up here i feel like i'm just off uh that's usually the muscles and the nerves playing games with you remember nerves affect muscles and when the muscles are not receiving its proper nerve supply what happens the muscles squeeze they squeeze and when they squeeze they spasm they shorten and when they shorten they pull so that's why we get pulling under the skull. That's why we get pulling inside the mid-back area. That's why it aches, because it shortens, because the nerves are irritated. When the stomach is not getting its food, it cramps. It cramps because it's not getting its food. So you must have proper nerve supply. Very, very important. Uh, if you look here, we're looking at proper ways of sleep. And number one, if you want to help pinch nerves, you must be sleeping correctly. One third of your life is in this position preferably on your back pillow underneath the knees okay you want to kind of take those those hip flexors and kind of release it what actually what it actually does it opens up the holes where the nerves come out in the lower back when you actually bend the knees so it relaxes those muscles a good uh, cervical pillow or a good flat pillow is good on the back if you're on your side make sure the pillow is thicker because you want the space to be taken up between the bed and your head that space right here okay very important. Keep the knees slightly bent, not all the way up, but slightly bent, pillow between the knees that will really help you get to sleep well. Try to stay, stay off the tummy. You notice I don't, I don't give you any alternatives here for tummy sleepers. Next thing, analgesic balm is very good. Uh, there are lots of things out there. Uh, we particularly have a great formula. I never put it out in the market. It goes real quick and I'm not trying to sell it, so I don't even want to talk about it here. Um, but uh, you, you must have a good analgesic bomb. There's cayenne peppers. There's uh, things you can design. There's different liniments. There's different menthols. Uh, there's 
a lot of different things you can do, but it does soothe muscles. And I can tell you that when you have a good uh, uh, a type of uh, cream that can penetrate, it will actually cause an analgesic effect on the superficial nerves and it can get rid of a lot of pain and actually help you. Uh, this thing here, uh, what do you think this is? The old carpal tunnel syndrome. This is the problem because, you know, people are, are typing like this or their wrists are like this or they're doing too much sewing or, or knitting or fine manipulative work with their hands. And obviously, if you are having inflammation there, by the way, what's great for carpal tunnel syndrome, besides the fact of using ice and stretching muscles, low-level laser. Low-level laser, they call it cold laser. Uh, lots of doctors out there, or I would say many, uh, use cold-level laser. And the reason why I say that, because the first thing that got FDA approved in the low-level laser was carpal tunnel syndrome. Going back many years ago. First thing got FDA approval was carpal tunnel syndrome through the FDA. Now, if you live out of the country on the other side of the world, you probably won't know what FDA means, Federal Drug Administration, but that was protected. That protects us here in the United States. And that was the first thing that got accepted and approved was carpal tunnel syndrome. So it definitely helps. Now, what do you do? Well, you know, we're, we're talking about splinting. If you have something, and this is a very important thing about pinched nerves, Regardless of where it's at, if you have something that's irritated and inflamed, you can't keep irritating it. You got to give it physiological rest. All right. Now, coming back to lower back pain, the worst thing you can do is keep laying in bed. Initially, maybe a day or two or three, but after that, because the muscles start to atrophy. But with these kind of conditions, you got to give it physiological rest. I have particular, okay, uh, CMC joint, carpal metacarpal joint right here. All right, my joint right here, and I'm sharing this because, listen, we learn from each other. Um, when I was on crutches for my knee surgery, which I had meniscus and I had plica corrected and I had a, the fat pad, the whole kabang, um, I was on crutches like this for weeks. I dislocated this joint. So, you know, here is a, a great little support. This boom, boom, wraps like this, okay? And it just comes over like that and just boom, just like that. So... What it does, it immobilizes this joint, the CMC. I put this on. This is an old injury. I'll always have problems here if I use it too much. And I'm stubborn, so I use this too much. I'll you know, pinch things and pull things, and I inflame it. So I put this on for a week or two, and I use it periodically. So um, don't be afraid to use something if it immobilizes it, as long as you can still use it. Now, that's very important because when you immobilize something, and you don't use it, muscles become weaker, predominantly in the lower back. So when you use a, like a lower back support and you keep that thing on all the time, guess what? Those muscles are going to get weaker. If you put a cervical collar on uh, and you use it too often, the muscles get weaker. It's okay initially. It's okay once in a while, but don't do it all the time, please. It will, it will inhibit the healing. Uh, we talk about therapy. A couple of things I want to mention, electrical muscle stimulation, ultrasound, mechanical traction, uh, we talk uh, diathermy, uh, Russian stimulation, uh, manual traction. I mean, you can actually get your spouse, your, your, your friend, your loved one, and you literally you can land your back with your neck and you can do light traction. You know, massage therapists do it. It's very simple. Take the head and just pull back, hold it there for about 15, 20 seconds, release and do it again to try to open up those nerves. Um, when you're on your back, you could pull the knees up to kind of open up the space of your lower back to relieve, to stretch those tight muscles and open up the holes. You see, what happens, here's my friend here. Um, this is the normal curve in the lower back here. But watch what happens when, if we're laying on our back like this and, and the knees come up like this, okay, I just want to give you an idea. What happens is the holes open up wider. So when you lay on your back and you bring your knees up, you're opening up those holes where those nerves are. So primarily when you're having a pinched nerve or something in the lower back, you want to open up the space because generally we look at DDD, degenerative disc disease, DJD, degenerative joint disease, uh, spondylosis, arthritis, osteoarthritis. That means that you're getting spurs, you're getting degeneration, and obviously you're affecting the space where the nerves are coming out of called the intervertebral foramen. And that foramen becomes smaller and you start getting more compression. So uh, therapy is good, and there are different things. Decompression, and if you have questions on that, you can leave questions below. Uh, so that, that is really important. So here, uh, the next thing takes us to is ice and heat. Ice and heat is therapy, 
And I say this separately because one of the greatest things you can do for anything acute is use ice because it reduces inflammation. And one of the greatest thing you can do for any chronic problem is heat because heat brings in circulation and oxygen and nutrition. Now you can actually alternate heat and ice. I like to start with heat and like a two to one ratio and end with heat. Okay, there's different old ways to do it. But here's a little tip for you. If you use ice, ice can never hurt you. Because even if you use ice on something that's chronic, it's not going to hurt you. Use a, uh, a paper towel in between the ice pack and the skin so you don't burn yourself and don't use the ice more than, five, more than 15 minutes. If you use heat, don't use it more than 30 minutes because you can burn yourself. Don't fall asleep with it and be very careful. If you have questions on that, let me know. Uh, here is the old semi-superman. This is great for core. I recommend people doing these if you can. Uh, this is excellent to really strengthen the core because for any type of injury or problem in the body, core is number one. If you have a neck problem, you got to strengthen core. If you got a mid back problem, you got to strengthen core. Low back, you got to strengthen core. If you want good posture, you got to strengthen core. I'm standing, I'm sitting right now. Guess what? If I had a weak core, this is what happens. Okay, you see my shoulders? Okay, a strong core keeps you sitting up. You don't need any support with a strong core. And most people have weak cores. You say, well, I do sit-ups all the time. I exercise all the time. Trust me, you have a weak core if you have chronic back problems. You need to strengthen core. You'll thank me later. Now, you look at this uh, picture right here, the old massage therapy. Excellent. I have a few massage therapists in my office. Excellent. I can tell you that massage therapists, and if, I'm sure I got plenty in the chat room right now, you guys do amazing work, and I'm a big believer in you because you have helped thousands of my patients. I'm talking about my, my massage therapist. The type of work that you do, it helps. It breaks down adhesions, which is scar tissue, increased range of motion, increases nutrition. It breaks down muscle contracture and spasming. It elongates muscle. It helps increase flexibility of the joints. It breaks down uh, scar formation in the joints. Uh, there's a lot that can be done with massage therapy, and it's excellent. And I tell people out there, if you have chronic problems and your doctors have recommended therapy, and you have not had hands-on work like myofascial release, okay, my, ther my, my chatters know what that means, release the myofascial uh, PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, which is neuromuscular re-education to retrain the brain to kind of, this is, this is PNF, uh, let's say that... Uh, I, I want. I can't turn this way. All right. So what I'll do is I'll come this way. Then I'll resist against the other way. Then I'll come back more. Okay. Then I'll resist and I'll come back more. Okay. So uh, by doing that, uh, you're actually retraining the brain. When you retrain the brain, you can increase range of motion. So PNF is a great therapy for people who do not have that mobility. Uh, that is something that will help regain mobility. It's a great thing that will actually help you to come, get out of pain. Here's a couple things I want to throw out at you. Just some great natural anti-inflammatories. There are one particularly ones that I like here. Boswellia is one of my favorite. Turmeric is one of my favorite. I like ginger. I like bromelain. And I love proteolytic enzymes. Now, proteolytic enzymes, devil's claw, people swear by it. But let me, let me go ahead and show my face here. Okay. Uh, proteolytic enzymes, by the way, uh, here is, uh, I'm not selling this, okay, but this is a serapeptase. Uh, there's different, this is best, and I'm not trying to uh, sell their brand, but uh, there are many different brands out there, but serapeptase particularly uh, helps break down scar tissue. See my video on serapeptase. By the way, I'll put it below. I'll make sure that when I'm done with this video, I'll put it below so you can see it. Read, listen to my, my video on serapeptase. It takes away dead tissue. It increases, it decreases the inflammation naturally. Um, it, it, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's, you'll learn about it, but listen to my video. I don't take too much time right here. Uh, as we move forward here, I say this by itself, omega-3s, DHA, EPA, excellent for inflammation. Zap. You have any kind of problem, you got to be on omega-3s. Omega-3s, good for the heart, good for the brain, good for the cells. Uh, it's a win-win situation. This is something that will reduce inflammation. You'll thank me later. Now, how much would you take? I would start out taking me at least a gram, a thousand milligrams. You can work your way up. If you got a lot of inflammation, you can go up 2,000 milligrams. Uh, there are other, there are lots of good formulas out there. I'm not going to go in and, and try to uh, advertise any of the formulas out there, but do your homework. If you got to go to Amazon, read read the ratings and the reviews there. That will help you out a lot. 
Uh, planks, very important. This is another way of strengthening your core. Keep that back straight. Keep everything straight. Uh, I like the planks. I think they're really, really important. Uh, stretching, if you have tight hamstrings, if you got uh, piriformis syndrome, um, I didn't put all the stretches in here. I just want to just tell you that this is excellent with pinched nerves because whenever you have a pinched nerve, remember that those nerves are supplying muscles and those muscles contract. Muscles, when they get tight, they pull on joints. Then you got the range, you're kind of pulling back. It's always pulling, pulling. And then, you know, you start leaning forward, brushing your teeth, trying to pick something up off the floor and the muscles aren't letting you do it. Number one reason why people hurt their back bending down is because of tight hamstrings. Because those hamstrings attach into the ischial tuberosity underneath. And once they get become tight, then all the stress goes to the back. But if the, if the hamstrings are loose, then you've got more movement into the pelvis, and then you, the lower back doesn't have to do as much work. So that's very, very important. Okay, we're approaching the end here. Hang tight. Uh, I say this at the end because I love this. And if people out there are putting down yoga, please don't. Uh, why? Uh, you don't have to do this kind of yoga. This is just a different form of yoga. There are so many forms of yoga, different types of yoga. There's heat, vinyasa. There's all kinds of different yogas. The reason why I like this is for several reasons. One, it increases flexibility. I, mean, I literally, I can stand up and I can just palm the ground. I can put my head underneath my knees. I, I, literally, I can come in like a, like totally just flex all the way. My head can come all the way between my knees. I won't do it this video, maybe another time. Um, but another thing I will mention as a Muslima or Muslimas mention is acupuncture. I am getting acupuncture myself now with a Chinese acupuncturist. I'm a big believer in it. I've always had acupuncture and I think acupuncture is another great thing. Yes, it is. It balances out the yin yang all right, so I know all about acupuncture, but the yoga is excellent. Why? Because of deep breathing. When you breathe correctly, it's all about the breath. And when you breathe correctly and you, and you, and you work and you stabilize your posture and you stay within balance, that will help the body get stronger. It will help it become more stabilized. That when you have pinched nerves in the body, um, the most important thing is you need to get back to the basics. Why or what is weak or what is unstable and start stabilizing the foundation so there's not irritation or continuous irritation on those nerves. That's what it's all about. That's why you have to see the other side of it. So instead of just, you know, taking the medication, I'm not going to go into which meds or the anti-inflammatories or the painkillers. You don't just want to correct the symptom. you got to get to the root, the cause, the underlying foundation so the body can repair and it can heal. I think I said enough. I, I want to thank our, 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 my chatters for being here. I thank you if you are just new tuning in to my channel. Um, I ask you to subscribe. Why? Because one reason, I want you to get well. I want you to be well. I want you to help other people. This is not for me. Trust me. I come here because I love to educate. I've been doing it since for decades. All right. If you want to check up on me, you can Google me. I've been on many, you know, I've been on networks and radios and I've been on all kinds of things. But now, you know, I love being on the Internet because I can reach out to people. I can communicate and I love helping people. That's what makes me sleep well. I believe in the, the, the creator above. I'm not going to mention names. But I believe that what you do in life uh, comes back tenfold when you do good things. So uh, help me educate people. I want to say a lot of love to each and every one of you. I really say my prayers for you. Uh, check me out on Facebook, Motivational Doc. I, I appreciate whatever thumbs up or likes or reviews you leave for me over there. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I really hope that this video helps you and gets you out of pain and gets you back on track again. God bless. We'll catch up with you later. Bye-bye now.